Greetings of Peace in Paradise. Welcome to Grow Community Wellness Chat. This evening, we're going to be focusing on how the five pillars of health intersect with finances and community. And so we're going to be taking a look at one of the leaders in Nikon, who's going to be talking to us tonight about building teams. So without further ado, here is Bob Woodward. Own ideas as to what you feel works in lifting others uh, in your team. Interesting as well how it said there's only one lifter to 20 who lean. Um, the average networker, uh, according to DSA statistics, will have about 10 people in their group, which means they'll be the lifter and the rest of their group are leaning on them to give them direction. So here's a couple of things that I put down that I feel can help us to lift and lead our teams in order to do better and to get that duplication. First, and I deliberately put this first, is the power of personal example. If we want to lift others, our personal example always plays a significant part. Um, I remember uh, Kim saying years ago, and I, I'm pleased to say she wasn't directing it at me, uh, she was just sharing with me an insight, uh, that she'd heard it said that uh, what you are shouts so loudly at me that I can't hear what you're saying. Have you ever heard that before? What you are shouts so loudly at me that I can't hear what you're saying. It's great to have all the wisdom in the world, but if we're not applying it, if we're not living it, if we're not doing it, then it's pretty hard to inspire others with our message. So it's really important to lead from the front, uh, to be an example. I'll talk about what that looks like in just a second. Uh, the other, uh, step number two, was to see the potential in others that they don't yet see in themselves, and to be sure to communicate it. Again, I think that's really, really important that we are close enough to people to be able to recognize their potential, to see it, and to encourage it to come out and to feed it out of them, which always you'll notice as we feed kind of through this, this list is always facilitated with love. I don't think it's possible to, to really lead anyone if we don't love them. Um, because at the base of things, uh, might be knowledge and understanding, but really, in order to influence and change behavior, you've got to have a foundation of relationship. If we have relationship, then we have influence. And if we have relationship, then we have love. So mutual love, trust, and respect leads to positive influence. So it's important that we make that connection in our role as leaders. So see the potential in others and let them know it. Step number three, closely aligned with that, of course, to celebrate successes. Um, and we've got the typical successes that we celebrate in NECAM, the rank advancements, um, the winning of uh, different awards, the Power Start, the Entrepreneur Club, uh, the Paragon Award, Team Kaizen, for example, um, that type of thing. But we want to be able to look at all the other little things that people do in order to build their business that we can jump in and recognize. And some of these require us to sit down and brainstorm Maybe get your pad out, your, your notebook, and write out a list of as many different things that you can look to to celebrate and recognize in other people's activities to encourage them. For example, when they receive their first order, do we phone them up and celebrate? Do we even know that they've placed it? If they're brand new, hopefully we're with them when they're placing their first order, and we're facilitating that and helping that that process be as smooth and comfortable for them? Do we celebrate? Do we tell them to phone us up and tell us when their box arrives so we can share in their excitement? Perhaps a great way, and I love this idea, uh, which I heard not that long ago, is get them to Facebook Live it when they get their package for the first time. <laughs> share it with the world. What a great way to prospect um, as well uh, when you're opening up your first package from NECAP. Great idea there. Um, now this, of course, knows if we're going to celebrate their successes, we need to know what they're aiming for, what their goals are, and what they're doing in order to celebrate. Uh, so what that suggests is that we're close enough with them to communicate, to understand what their goals are, 
what their objectives are, why they're in NECAN, what they're hoping to achieve, so that we can share that journey together and help them to achieve it. Um, fourth point, step number four, be close to people. This Again, you can see they're all kind of weaving very closely together. Be close to people. We can't lift people if we're not in their proximity. Mm -hmm. And being in proximity doesn't necessarily mean geographical proximity. It means in their mind space, uh, in connection with them via email, via chat, via WhatsApp, via Zoom, via Skype, whatever ever method may be required in order to be involved, engaged, and supportive. But it's very, very important if we want to influence in order to create change, we need to be in their proximity. So get close to people. Heart to heart is the best way to build this business. Uh, step number five, to keep things simple so that success is achievable. Again, I think that's really important that as we help people to set their goals and as we work and we stay close to people, that we try to keep things as simple as possible. So book ending, that's point number one, the personal example, and point number five of keeping things simple. What are the simple things and what does personal example look like when it comes to building our weekend business in order to lift people in this way. A couple of things. First of all, good, better, best. I'm gonna use language we've heard time and time again. Good, better, best. What's that? 500 points, 1,000 points, 1,500 points. Nice and simple. Now, of course, I wanna emphasize, simple doesn't equal easy. When I say nice and simple, I'm not saying it's easy. I've often heard it said that simplicity is at the far end of complexity. Mm. Uh, but if we focus on having a simple message, as we strive to be diligent, consistent, and persistent, then eventually over time, what we repeatedly do gets easier. Not that the nature of things, the thing has changed, but that our ability to do has increased. So it's important that we perpetual, uh, persistently push against that boulder, so to speak, until it gets easier to move. So 500, 1,000, 1,500. We've got now um, packs that help us to do that with ease. Uh, but of course, there is a wonderful array of products across the board in Nikan that people can use, that they can choose month after month after month if we give them the right exposure. What's another great thing to keep things simple, to keep it rewardable and to be a great example? Power start, or if we're recruiting people on a regular basis, which is my invitation to you today, that we get our new people to join as power starters so that they set off the path straight away with a clear vision of what their first 30 days looks like. One of the great ways to get moving quickly is to give them a clear vision and a clear expectation of how to get started. One of the obstacles to recruitment is not knowing how to start someone off. What is expected of them? What do they do and how do they do it? Might be the thought or the question, the worry in the mind of the recruiter. If I'm brand new and my sponsor hasn't told me, how do I get started? What do I do next? And if they do nothing, then all of that great effort and activity to recruit someone gets, goes to waste. So a simple solution is to use the programs that Niken has put in place to facilitate immediate growth and long-term profitability. It starts with the power start, which gets them to executive. It then goes to the entrepreneur club, which gets them to silver. Then you've got the Paragon Award. Then you've got all, all the way through to Team Kaizen, which helps them really get on a strong path for perpetual growth and improvement. So if we just use the annual incentives as our core foundation for business strategy, right there, you've got a business plan for the year. We bring people in, we set them on the path to use these activities, these resources to get going. Uh, and of course, in the words of Dave Johnson, recruit, 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 and recruit. <laughs> That's always the thing that we wanna do. We wanna make sure that we're having a steady flow of new blood. I had a really interesting conversation today with a member of my team that I've really grown to love. And uh, 
and she was giving some feedback from a conversation that she had with a member of her team that had been in the business for a long time, uh, but is disenfranchised. And they've got their reasons, and I respect their reasons, uh, but they're feeling disenfranchised and um, not really optimistic or full of faith and confidence. So when she was asking their feedback, they gave not even a glass is half empty kind of perspective. It's say, I don't really see much in the glass at all kind of perspective. And, and the challenge with this, as I, as I spoke to her about it, was there will always be people in our business that will see the glass half empty or may not even see the glass at all, in mm -hmm. spite of the fact that they've joined. How many people have joined a gym and have rarely gone? Yeah? Have you seen that? Gyms see that all the time. Probably why they have annual membership fees versus monthly membership fees half the time. Because they know if it was monthly, they would get less, less income for their business. It's human nature to start and stop. It's human nature to get hit by obstacles and barriers and then lose sight of what you're working for. Um, but it's also human nature to not want to look bad and so to stick around. Right? And I get that. That's fine. But if they're the people that you listen to for motivation, then you're going to be listening to the wrong people. So what's the solution when you hear those types of things? It's always going to be to recruit new people. It's always going to be that. And if the average networker has a team of 10 or so people in their group, in their organization, then 100% using that poem that we started with, there's always one lifter to 20 who lean. You're always going to need to look for new people to help you lift and recognize the balance there. But if we can understand that that's okay, that's part of the journey, that's part of the process, and it's also part of our responsibility as leaders to anticipate that, but also to respond appropriately and healthily to that when it comes, mm -hmm. then we can move forward with confidence. I, re I remember hearing, and I hope you don't mind the, the anecdote, because it comes from Amway. Um, I think everyone here knows I used to work for them. Uh, and on one occasion, I was at an event with Amway where Rich DeVos, who is the founder of Amway or co-founder, was speaking. And uh, he shared a funny story. Now, of course, Amway is one of the oldest network marketing companies around, and it's made him one of the richest men in America, right? So he's done pretty nicely out of it. So he said one day he went to church. He's a church going, he's a Christian. He said, I went to church one day, and he says, and a man stopped me. He saw me, he says, oh, you're that Amway guy, aren't you? And he nodded and said, yes. I don't think he quite knew which Amway guy he was, perhaps because he referred to him as the Amway guy. Yeah. And he goes, you still in that thing? <laughs> All right. You still in that thing? He's the owner, multi-billionaire. Yes, he's in it. And um, he says, yeah, yeah, I am. What he said, yeah, I used to be in Amway years ago, but uh, you know, it didn't work out. I, I gave up a long time ago. It wasn't working for me. Uh, how's it working for you? He says, yeah, it's doing pretty good. The reality is if you give up, it's not going to be working too good for you. Yeah. But if you stay the course and keep at it, persistence will always pay off. Yeah, so here are my thoughts. I've got a couple of, couple of comments here uh, from a book that I've been reading on leadership. And I like this point. Good leaders and followers need to store up, I like this, gladness from previous experiences in order to weather out the tests and the buffets of buffetings of today and tomorrow in their relationships. Isn't that interesting? Now, this was written not from someone in Niken or in network marketing, but from a worldwide recognized leader. Good leaders and followers need to store up gladness from previous experiences in order to weather out the tests and the buffetings of today and tomorrow in their relationships. What that says is buffetings will come to all of us in leadership. It certainly does. And in followership. It certainly happens too, where our faith gets tested and our followership gets tried. In fact, one of the first indicators of a great leader is one that has learned to follow first. A great follower certainly has what it takes to become a great leader. Um, he also says this, most followers ultimately like a leader 
who makes reasonable demands of them, who expects performance, and who praises and reproves accordingly. And all of this, of course, must be done in a spirit of real love. I like that. In a spirit of real love, we have healthy and appropriate expectations upon those that we serve. We have a collective reservoir of gladness from our bank of experiences that we share that we can draw upon to weather the storms that may come to us. And we support and praise and reprove in healthy times, in healthy ways, always motivated by love. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope this has been helpful. I know that if we put our mind to lifting, even right now, if it starts with lifting ourselves, mm. that's a great place to start. Mm. Because often for many of us, today perhaps, for most, that might be the starting point. Step number one is to lift myself. Start where we stand, lift ourselves onto higher ground, because it's really hard to lift someone onto higher ground if I'm not there in the first place. So let's get there first, do that through personal example. What is the personal example? Again, by way of reminder, 500, 1,000, 1,500, good, better, best. The Power Start and the Entrepreneur Club are significant ways to get that moving. And of course, as a part of keeping things simple, to point number five, how do we do that? We plug them into the system. It is the system that facilitates duplication. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We simply need to jump on board and let the wheel take us forward. So let's do that, plug into the system, good, better, best, lead by example, lead with love, lift others, play our part, and we'll make a real difference. I hope this helps. Thank you very much, and we'll speak to you next week. Bye-bye. Woohoo, I was definitely impressed with that for sure, for sure, for sure.